Well, welcome everybody. Uh, year six, which is uh, kind of hard to believe to some degree, but the uh, big thing is 100th year of uh, Tulsa basketball. We really want to address that and, and um, just really kind of honor those teams and, the, and the, certainly the, the length of time and the history and the success. And uh, our motto for our team is certainly to uphold that, those standards. And um, it's an exciting year in the sense that, uh, you know, we have some new faces and uh, our team will change, uh, not drastically, but it'll change some, uh, losing a guy like uh, Jerome Jordan, who's a, a seven-footer. So uh, really excited about the new guys. Um, we've had some great preseason workouts. Kids have been here pretty much all year, um, and uh, we're, in, we're in pretty good spirits and pretty good shape at this point. I think so. I mean, I think the, the neat thing about our profession, whether it's, a, you know, any coach, uh, you, your team changes on a yearly basis and um, your landscape changes. And that, that takes away from uh, the monotony of any job. So there's new challenges, there's new personalities, um, and uh, we're embracing all of that. So it, it'll, it'll be a lot of fun as other kids step up who are, who are prior, you know, in a program prior to, to uh, this year and then new kids who are just coming into the program, you know, seeing them develop and seeing how they listen and learn and, 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 and how coachable they are at, a, at an early age right now. With regard to strengths and style, what stays the same and what do you envision maybe being a little different than what we've seen? Well, I mean, uh, I don't, I don't care where you are. I mean, what stays the same is certainly defense and, and rebounding. I mean, those are those are staples for any program to be successful. Um, the one thing I'll tell you that uh, I've been saying a lot to people throughout the year is the national championship game was won at sixty-one to fifty-nine, and um, Butler is in the national championship game because they guarded. And that's very impressive. So that hopefully stays the same. Now, I don't know if we'll be as good defensively. Uh, that's the challenge for me and my staff. But I think you'll see uh, us being a little bit more guard-oriented because we'll have a little more depth there. Um, you have some guys that can go. You have some experience. But then you've got some great size. You know, you've got uh, DJ Magley who's stepping in now, that 6'9 and 260 pounds. And Steven Eidlitz is good a skilled back to the basket scores there is in Conference USA. So you'll, you'll still see us throwing it in there, too, because I think we can get something out of it. We'll either get fouled or we'll get a bucket. Is it in any way feasible to say you'll be better without Jerome and without Uzo, or is that just a ridiculous thing at think? No, I don't think it's ridiculous. I think we'll just be different. Um, um, I, I think at the point of attack, it's, it's hard to – it's hard to certainly, um, you know, make up for a guy in Ben Uzo that's six foot three and 205, 210 pounds, and started 100 and 141 games. But we'll just we'll just be di different, but we'll be deeper. And 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 I don't think we'll be totally dependent on um, two players. And um, so that's that's going to be the fun part of it because they're going to emerge. You know, there's things that I don't know right now that they'll emerge over the next few weeks, and uh, they'll dictate kind of where we go and who's getting a majority of shots, and and all that will kind of work itself out. Who do you see will be the leaders on this team? Well, I think Justin's shown great leadership. I mean, Justin Hurd is a is a 2.9, 3.0 student in business school. He's played four years. He's got a ton of experience. He has a chance to spread his wings and, and really be the guy now uh, with the departure of uh, the three seniors from last year. So um, I, if, no question. And he's a team captain. And then the other team captain is Stephen Idlett. He and Justin came in together. Uh, the nice balance there is one's a perimeter player and one's a post player. So both guys can hold when we break up post perimeter, both guys can hold their end of the floor accountable. Uh, and then you've got a great support around them. I mean, Glenn hasn't played for oh, 18 months. 
I mean, for the most part, he played in those two games last year. But I think he's chomping at the bit to, to be a leader and, and, and show what he's done in his maturation process. DJ Magley has great experience, two years. This is his fourth year of college. Um, Joe Richard, his third year of college. So you've got some great support around those those two two um, team captains. Well, guys like Joe and Bryson take steps forward this year offensively to where they'll demand honest coverage and well, two different players, uh, two different positions for the most part. You know, I think that 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 question kind of more alludes to really probably Bryson on the perimeter and, and whether, you know, he can shoot the jump shot. Um, he's always been able to slash. He's always been able to score on the break. He has a great IQ, good penetrator and passer. And, and what you get out of Joe is just that at the four position. And I think those are two different dynamics on the floor. Uh, you just can't have too many of those guys on the floor at the same time. And at times last year, that's what the case was. You know, we had maybe two guys on the floor like that at the same time, and there's where your help defense, particularly starting in February last year, uh, changed everything. That's when people just made a decision to, to, to not guard and double Jerome. So I don't think we'll see that. I don't think Steven will see many double teams um, just because of our ability to shoot the basketball. Look at the schedule. The month of November is pretty dangerous. There's a lot of good teams on the schedule. Let's talk about the start you guys one well, it is. I think every every game on our schedule is fairly dangerous. Um, um, I purposely did that scheduling wise. Um, you know, you guys have been with us every step of the way in, in terms of the five years in Conference USA, and you learn about a lot about who to play and how to schedule. Fortunately, some of that's luck and timing and dates, but you, we, we really are in no position not to play people that aren't going to win games. Um, now, that makes every game an exciting game. That makes every game uh, a game that I think our fan base can, can get excited about and say it's a relevant game. Um, um, so we've got to we've got to grow and improve, and yet win. So uh, great dynamic for a young, fairly young team. Doug's biggest losing those two guys as players, and that Mark McBain and Jerome is a personality of the team. What do you think this group's personality would be on Friday? It looked like they were just really having a good time. Yeah, I do think the personality changes. Um, I really see the, uh, you know, maybe your sophomores that became juniors and your juniors that became seniors. I think their their personalities coming out a little bit more, uh, not maybe overshadowed um, by the by those two guys. And then I think the incoming freshmen, that all three of them have personality. And uh, when you say that, it's like they dictate the tempo of the team. They dictate uh, the excitement that's that's drawn. DJ Magley, I think people are, you know, certainly appreciate him for what he did during introductions last year. Doesn't help you win a game, but at least it shows, uh, you know, some connection with the fan base. And uh, I think you're going to see uh, quite a bit of that. You can't change personalities all that much as a coach. I mean, you know, you work on it to some, but uh, you know, by nature, those guys were really, really quiet. And by nature, uh, Jordan Clarkson, Tim Pete, and Lonnie Baruti are not are not quiet kids. You kind of you kind of insinuated emphasis there on, on defense this year. Is that just on the ball defense, or do you have enough personnel to, to do some full court you know pressure uh, type stuff uh, more often? I've never pressed. Um, Defensive emphasis has always been there, Kevin. I mean, we've been an outstanding defensive team. We actually gave up more points last year than the years before that. We gave up 65 a game. So we were a little disappointing there. Now, part of that was Jerome Jordan went from 143 blocks as a sophomore to 90-some as a junior and then just 80-some as a senior. So that was a big part of our defensive scheme. We've got to be a little bit more of a, uh, of a position defender in the post, I think, Steven will block some shots. DJ may block some shots, but we'll miss that phase of things. But um, to, to, to get new guys and then new roles, uh, you, you have to have great defensive principles. You will not see it, my teams running around and just trapping randomly. Um, uh, I just don't know if you can do that with great 
teams that you're playing. I don't know if you can uh, just go randomly trap somebody. You can randomly trap a poor ball handler, uh, but that's we're going to have a purpose for what we're doing, and uh, we're going to be really good. And if we pick up in the backcourt, we pick up in the backcourt. We will have enough depth to do that. Um, but I consider that as much pressing as just you know a random trap. With the depth that you have, how important is it to use this time to do rotations and playing times? That's something that's going to be a chore this year. Yeah, I think it. it you, you know, I mean, geez, we play in what uh, eleven days, so uh, you, you you really got to get somewhere quickly with those guys, and that and yet you want some of these guys all you know you want them all to play in the exhibition games. But we're we're doing everything with a purpose. I mean, I, I really believe that I have to kind of go back last year and even the year before. I was more at an eight man rotation. I think I go back to almost my first couple years where I'm at a 10-man rotation. There was so much outside of this last year on having Jerome and Ben being seniors and trying to get to the tournament. Is there any advantage or is it an extra hunger for a team to maybe be a little more off the radar? Like, like you are? Well, no, I think last year, I think that, uh, you know, uh, some people that support the program. I think there was the commercials and the billboards. And, you know, early on when I was here, it was like, hey, we don't know your players. Okay, well, last year you, you knew my players a little bit. So that's the natural progression in any program that really matters if it's important to the community. Um, and then I think the tournament being in Tulsa added to that a little bit. Um, but these guys are all individuals. They all have their own minds. They all have their own goals, and they're competitive. So, I mean, of course they want to go out and w win a championship. Of course they, they're itching to not only get the postseason, which we've done the last three years, but to get to the NCAA tournament. So I think you'll see that come out through not only their skill set, their experience, but also their personality. I, I think looking at them, obviously every team each year takes its own personality, but for three or four years, Jerome and Ben were such a big part of it. You kind of knew what you had with them. Yeah. And you know Justin, obviously, but more guys are going to have to step up. New guys are going to have to step up. Is that fun as a coach to kind of piece together a, a new lineup like that? Well, I, I think I said earlier, I think that's the, the neat thing about what we do. You, you, you know, it changes. The landscape changes. It's, uh, there's not the monotony where you're going to a desk in, a, in, a, in an office building with a, you know, a coat and tie on every day and doing the same thing for the next 30 years. I mean, it changes based on personnel. It's, a, it's a, yes, X's and O's, and, uh, but it's also decisions with people and, and developing young kids. I mean, you're talking about, uh, you know, Cody Maduka had his birthday yesterday. He's 19 now. You know, he arrived here when he was 17. Um, so you're a part of their life, you know. And and um, we've got a neat thing going on now, following Ben and his, la you know, in his final stages as to whether he makes the New Jersey Nets. And what an unbelievable uh, teaching tool for me, with everyone else who's following him, that they want to do the same thing. And uh, it's just got a lot of things going that uh, we can talk to our team about and where they want to go, and they've really bought into it. Talking about Justin Hurt, you mentioned the leadership earlier. Mm -hmm. He thrived with Ben and Jerome both there last year. In, in what ways does he maybe give you something more or something different this year? Well, I, I think he's a smart kid. I think it's, not, it's you know, the team is, is, is a lot of it's his personality to some degree. You know, I don't know if that was able to come out in the past. Now, he, by nature, is somewhat quiet, too, but he's been with us for four years. He's had success. He's had, he's had struggles. He, you know, you, you get both shoulders operated on in a six-week time. I mean, it's, you know, it's a challenge for a player. A strong um, Mississippi player of the year, so he's got a little swagger to him. Signs at UConn, plays in the Final Four. I mean, those things, are, you, you, you can't put a price on those things. So, um, And he's, he's had to sit now for 18 months. So I think he and DJ and Glenn, Cody, they're all, they're all pretty excited about getting out on the floor and actually doing it for real. Oh, uh, Jordan and uh, Tim uh, Very advanced freshman. Very, very advanced. Maybe the, the most advanced freshman we've had. Um, in fact, they are the most advanced freshman that we've had. Um, really understand, um, until you start coaching a kid, you really don't know.